Hello everyone, welcome to our Healing of the Body Class 7. Well, quite a class we had as our Class 6. Nothing local can be healed. And I want to give you some clarity about this today because I hear the ringing of concern that if nothing local can be healed and yet here I have what is in experience a very local problem a problem of illness or disease or injury or out in or as the body of consciousness, the body of experience, I have another form of discord or disharmony or lack or limitation. Again, we'll stick with our sense of body for this moment. But the same applies, you know that. The same principle applies there is one being, one I, one presence, therefore one principle alone, and that principle is the principle of infinite, eternal, omnipresent harmony of being, no matter what aspect of being the mind is detecting as either disharmonious or harmonious, discordant or in peace and happiness and fullness, wholeness. But let's stick with our sense of body. And so it is indeed undeniable that when we have something wrong with the body, we have some form of illness, some form of disease or activity of disease, some category of injury. It is in experience local, of course. And so I want to make sure we understand this statement that nothing local can be healed. You see, the answer really is contained in the understanding that there is nothing local and that locality is simply a sense. Let's go back to our premise, to truth's premise, and that is that the whole of God, the whole of spirit is incorporeal. You are an incorporeal being living in or living as the incorporeal universe or consciousness or infinity, eternity. There is nothing but the incorporeal. And yet, which doesn't change the incorporeal, we are having as a five sense consciousness at this time or moment of our unfolding awareness, a corporeal sense of the incorporeal. Right there is the key if we can grasp it. God is incorporeal because God is all. You are incorporeal. I am incorporeal. All is incorporeal. Yet the five sense mind, the five sense awareness, is having a corporeal sense of the incorporeal. But that doesn't make corporeality real. Right there's the answer. Now we can say it like this. There is only the infinite. There is only omnipresence. Therefore, you are the infinite. Because the whole of the infinite exists at every point of itself at the same time. And as every point of itself at the same time. Therefore, you are that. There is nothing else you can be. Ever. You are that. You are that oneness in unique and individual expression as the whole of itself as that unique and individual expression that the five sense awareness has called you, has called me, has called everything, everywhere of the entirety of experience. And yet, even as your truth of infinity and as your truth of omnipresence, which exists 
fully and tangibly and visibly and fully manifest and fully demonstrated here and now as you. There's nothing more of it to demonstrate or manifest or become visible or tangible. The whole of oneness, the whole of you therefore, the whole of I therefore, the whole of all therefore, is the whole of that oneness. And oneness, omnipresence, doesn't have anything left to demonstrate. It is the oneness of demonstration already. If there was something left to demonstrate, then oneness would need to be two-ness, so that one half of it is already demonstrated and the other half needs to be demonstrated, and somehow some connection in the middle makes it so. But this isn't true. Only oneness is. Only oneness. And oneness is already. And therefore oneness is fully manifest as that oneness, fully demonstrated as the entirety of that oneness, fully visible and tangible as the entirety of that oneness. And you are that because in oneness there is nothing else. And oneness most certainly is the only truth, the truth of God. I am that I am. And besides me, there is none else. Throughout scripture, throughout all the scriptures of the world and the ages, we have the same message. I am that. And besides me, besides that I, besides God, the truth, spirit, there is none else. Besides omnipresence, there is none else. Do not make false idols. Don't make an assumption or a belief that there is something other than oneness, other than God. Because if you do, you'll suffer. And there's no need to suffer. All we need to do is lift into our proper identity or awaken to our proper truthful identity, which is oneness. I am the son of God. You are the son and daughter of God. You are the sunbeam of the sun. You are the wave of the ocean. One with the sun, one with the ocean. Not separate, not apart, not different, but one. Therefore, the wholeness of that one existing as the one, everywhere present, equally present. That is what you are, I am, all is. Okay, despite that infinity and omnipresence that you are, you are having and I am having and all beings in our consciousness are having a finite sense or a local sense or a personal sense of that which is actually incorporeal, infinite, eternal, omnipresent, incapable of being actually finite, actually local, actually personal, but sensed as being. Now, here's the key. You see, sense never is real. It is just sense and remains just sense. Now, in sense, which is the five sense experience, when and only when it of its own self is believed to be real, has the experience, is the experience itself, of being or containing both good and bad. And so let's assume that at this moment there is something disharmonious or discordant with the body, illness, disease or injury. Why? Let's try to explain it like this. The... Further away from pure truth, pure truthful identity, which is pure incorporeal consciousness, pure infinite consciousness, pure eternal consciousness, eternity as consciousness, pure omnipresence, which is 
pure light, pure freedom, pure oneness, with nothing to demonstrate, pure omnipresence, pure divine being, pure wholeness, completeness, literally omnipresent, tangibly and visibly so. Therefore, all experience infinitely, any experience infinitely, is spontaneously evidenced at the very same moment of its need or desire. You see, the words need or desire are antiquated. They're no longer needed because no need is ever experienced. No desire is ever experienced. Each moment of Life, each moment of experience, is the fullness of itself spontaneously, even quicker than that, before you call, I have answered. Omnipresence is already there before awareness gets there. And omnipresence is already divinely, whole, complete, infinite, eternal, blissful, ethereal fulfillment of all, right here, at and as every moment. So there is the pure consciousness, the God consciousness. Every degree further away from that. In other words, one degree already has an and. God and. And right there, you see, we are becoming the prodigal son and daughter. We've drifted away from pure God, pure truth, pure spirit. And now we have God and something, starting off with our personal sense. There is God, but then there is me. And I still understand God as me, but I need catering to. I need things. You see, immediately that and, the personal sense, needs something that it thinks it doesn't have because it's created that and in belief. There isn't anything and, there is only God. And God is already the completeness of itself, infinitely and eternally, fully demonstrated, fully manifest, therefore nothing to demonstrate, nothing to manifest, simply the freedom and expression of infinite being, living its moment-by-moment purpose. Divine, joyful, giving, sharing purpose. And every degree further away, lower and lower, we can say, in conscious awareness, which means more and more material, more and more physical, more and more dense, less light, less spirit, as conscious awareness. The more we drift away or drift down from that pure God consciousness, the darker our experience becomes. Now, that darkness is understood because God is light. I am the light of the world, Jesus told us. Therefore, as we are not that pure light, we can say our experience is filled with more and more shadows or darkness as we drift away from that light in conscious awareness. And this is what locality seems to be, or personal self seems to be, or finiteness seems to be, separate and apart experience seems to be. Me, and then a big world with everything out there, some of which I want, the good elements and quantities and experiences and people of it, and the bad parts I do not want, the unpleasant people and characters, the lacks and limitations of experience. But all of this is simply a darkness or a degree of darkness or pockets of darkness or shadows in our consciousness. And they're there only because consciousness isn't illumined. So here we are with a darkness, an unwitting darkness of consciousness And it is that very darkness that appears in our experience to be, in the case of the body or our physical sense of body, illness or disease or accident or injury or old age, decrepitude, tiredness, weakness, 
a lack of youthfulness, a lack of beauty, and so on. It isn't real. It is simply a finite sense or corporeal sense, a darkness in consciousness that is that which appears to us as our discord, our disharmony, our illness. And because it isn't real, because locality or because a shadow, a pocket of darkness, a personal self-experience isn't real, and that actually right there, the very presence of it itself that appears to be discordant or ill or diseased or injured or lacking or limited in any way and of any good whatsoever, is the whole of the incorporeal, the whole of the light. Because there is actually in truth, which means in actuality, in reality, nothing but light, God, truth, omnipresence. But our sense of it has dropped away from it itself and is sensing a locality or a personal self-experience, a finiteness. And that locality or personal self-experience or finiteness in sense or of sense is the shadow or the darkness and therefore is that discordant or painful or suffering experience. You catch this? So... We can say, even though it's hard to hear, especially as we are suffering, but we are speaking of being able to heal the body. And so we have to know the principle. We have to know that which actually is and then lift to it for the experience of healing, which we can have here and now as we lift. Because as we lift, there is truth, fully evident, fully demonstrated, as it always is, fully manifest, as it always is, eternally, as you, as your very unique and individual being and body. So realize now that that place that certainly, unarguably appears as local, and of suffering, of pain, of lack or limitation of health or wellness, wholeness, or anything else, is even whilst we're experiencing the pain, even whilst we're suffering, actually, here and now, the bliss of and the love of and the comfort and freedom of truth the perfect body of truth exists as the entirety of your body here and now. And so do you see, because it isn't real in truth, all that has to be done is to know that it isn't real and then forget it, don't try to work on it, don't try to bring truth to that locality to heal it. It is only a shadow, and we don't want to try to get the sun to come and fix our particular experience of a shadow in our backyard, as we heard yesterday, and the reason we don't want to do it is that it is impossible. If we try to do it, if we think that that shadow is something real, and then we try to get the light to come to it, to heal it, or illumine it, to relieve and free and heal it, then we haven't understood truth and we will fail. We have to make this very clear. What we do is realize that all shadows, all shadows around the entire world, are only, well, first of all, all shadows around the entire world are the same thing, no matter how people would describe them. And in our metaphor, we can say some people would describe them as illness. Others would describe them as 
disease. Others describe them as injury. Others describe them as accident. Others describe them as lack. Others, limitation. Others, loneliness. Others, depression. Others, argument. Others, war. And so on and so on. But actually, all shadows around the entire world are the very same thing you know it, and that is a lack of light. That's all. doesn't matter how we describe our own experience of shadows. All shadows are actually nothing more than a lack of light. And so what's the solution? The solution certainly isn't to sit and pray for our shadow, sit and meditate, sit in silence for our shadow, hoping that the sun will somehow hear us, take pity on us, adjust itself in the universe and shine particularly on our shadow and heal it because we have managed to pray somehow effectively for the sun to do such a thing. What utter nonsense. Again, hear the words of Jesus. God does not favour a few. God does not potentise the pool for a favoured few. You can't influence God any more than you can influence the sun or the rain or gravity or aerodynamics or mathematics or music. Music is music and it's a principle. Aerodynamics is a principle. The sun and the gravity and mathematics is all principle and we cannot influence it to work particularly or for our favour It has to work and can only work because its only presence is the universal one principle. And when we know that and then tap into it, we have the full infinite resources of that very principle. And this is true of any principle. Now let's go to the principle that is God, the actual only principle, the master principle, the divine one, sacred principle of all. We have to go to it, and it is shining fully. It is present fully. It is fully manifest. It is fully demonstrated everywhere, infinitely and eternally, this very second. And we have to go to that everywhere, infinitely and eternally. We have to lift our consciousness, our awareness to it, and realise that it is already present, fully manifest, fully tangible, right here as our shadow and all shadows. Not just as our shadow or for our shadow, but as all, everywhere present, equally present, here and now. Therefore, we have to forget about our shadow and we have to go to the sun itself, go to the light itself. And when we do, we're going to see the light throughout the land, healing not just our shadow, but all shadows. And this is the beauty of truth, and this is the purpose of truth, so that we can reveal the Father's truth, God's truth, the truth of being, universally, not just for us. Thankfully, we're unable to witness God for us, because God is principle. So the only way of witnessing God is universally, is everywhere present, equally present, so that when God is witnessed as your consciousness, as mine, then wherever we are, we witness liberty. We witness God present, everywhere present, and equally present, without condition, without exception. And so let's go back to the body and assume that we are, in one way or another, suffering, we're in pain, we have illness, disease, injury, accident. What do we do? Okay, we realise that it is of its own self unreal and that the whole of God actually is already here. Nothing is going to be healed, but we are going to lift up into truthful consciousness and witness that which appeared to be ill or discordant or disharmonious, be whole. So ignore that seeming problem. Lift up now 
into the one universal, infinite, eternal, omnipresent light. Let's do it together. I am the light. My being, my consciousness is light, nothing different. God's eyes are too pure to behold iniquity. This means that the light is too pure to behold shadows, to behold darkness. We can say in the light there is nothing but light. And because God is light and God is infinite, omnipresent, eternal, and God is consciousness, then consciousness is infinite, omnipresent, eternal light. And nothing but light. I am the light. I put away my senses. I don't wish my senses to sense anything but truth. And so right now let me put them away. And rest in pure consciousness alone. That consciousness being pure light alone. I am the light and besides me there is none else. There are no shadows, there are no pockets of darkness, there is no disharmony, no discord, nothing but light. And because there is nothing but light, there can be nothing but light. It would take something else to create a shadow or darkness. But there isn't anything but light. Pure, infinite, eternal, omnipresent light. Therefore, only light is. I am the Lord, and besides me there is none else. I am the light, and besides me there is none else. Everywhere I observe, throughout my consciousness, I see just light. I feel just light. I sense, I experience just light. The light that is I, my consciousness, is infinite, eternal, omnipresent. 
Do you feel that? Do you sense that? Are you beginning to experience that? Keep your mind on pure light everywhere, infinitely about. Forget about the objectified world. It is just the way the light appears to be through the finite mind or objectified mind, conceptual, conditioned mind. It's the corporeal sense of the incorporeal, the material sense of that which is just light. I've shared with you before that at one time, a few years ago, there was a lady sitting at the back of the retreat and she was very attentive to our two days of classes but didn't say a word, not a word. And then at the end of the final class, on the second day, I asked everyone if there were any questions. And she shared this with our group. I'm a chemist, she said, and in the laboratory, when we use a powerful microscope to look at anything, Look at the body. We go so deep within the body that all we experience is light and peace. And this is true of absolutely anything we wish to take a high powered microscope to in our world. Absolutely anything. We can take a human body or any organ function, the skeleton, blood, bone, anything at all of the human body, animal body, plant or vegetable body, the body of inanimate objects, sand, stone, wood, plastic, metal, anything that the mind describes as a particular form or body of material, of matter, of substance. And as we look deep down into the depth of its withinness with a powerful modern microscope, we come to that degree of it that reveals that its very essence, its very substance the very fabric it is, is actually light and peace. It's as if the microscope is able to shine through or ignore the five senses, the objectified senses of the mind, and reveal the truth of the very substance of anything we care to examine. And so in this way, ignore the way the light and the peace appears to be as we look at it purely with the five sense human mind. It isn't correct. And this is why Jesus told us, judge not by the appearance. You see, he knew that the way light appeared, God appeared as we peered at it or experienced it, truth, spirit, as a five sense mind was incorrect, was untrue. Judge not by the appearance, but judge by righteous judgment. Judge by the truth, the living truth, the living reality that all, without exception, All is light and peace. Here and now, your body is light and peace. And so fill your awareness with the truth of the omnipresence, the infinity, the eternality of light being the truth of you the body of you, the world of you, 
and everything everywhere in your experience as your experience. I am the light. Everywhere present only light is. Only light exists. Pure light and besides light there is none else. I am the peace and besides peace there is none else. My peace I give unto you. I give unto your awareness. My peace, truthful peace, the peace that is God omnipresent, God infinite, God eternal, God incorporeal. Peace, peace. My peace I give unto your awareness. My peace I fill your awareness with. And as you are gently open to receive that peace of truth, it fills your awareness. And because your awareness, your consciousness, is the entirety of your being, Peace fills and is witnessed as the entirety of your being. Infinite, omnipresent, eternal light, peace. The whole of light even as it is infinite, omnipresent, eternal, everywhere and equally present, is impossible to localize. We can have a point of awareness, yes, but that point of awareness anywhere in your infinity of light doesn't localize it. Anywhere you observe is the whole of light, whilst everywhere else of experience is also the whole of light. Impossible to localize, impossible to finitize, impossible to make objective. In order to make something objective or finitize or localize, we have to be able to take a part of the substance, the presence, the form, the matter, and separate it in order to objectify it. Now we have an object, but that object is separate from all other objects. But light is inseparable, truth is inseparable. Always we are dealing with the infinite ocean of truth, of light, of peace. And we can mould it. We can observe any part of its infinite omnipresence. But that observation doesn't make it objective. It doesn't objectify the peace or God or the light or omnipresence. It's simply a moment or a place of awareness but that moment or place consists of and is the whole of light, the whole of peace, the whole of God, the whole of omnipresence, inseparable and indeed not separated, not objectified, but a moment of awareness or a point of awareness. Let's imagine to understand this, that we are ocean beings. We are the ocean. And so the entirety of experience, the entire universe is ocean. Our body is ocean. Everyone and everything in our experience is ocean. All is made of the one infinity of ocean. 
And so we cannot ever take a body of water out of the ocean and therefore create an object of water separate and apart from the ocean. That's impossible. The whole of the ocean is the infinite, eternal substance of being or life or presence of being. Inseparable, indivisible. Always the whole of itself everywhere present. And so we can travel in awareness to any part of our ocean, our consciousness. And there observe that part or that place. But it isn't separate from the ocean. In fact, it's the whole of the ocean, omnipresent, simply being observed at this place or point. As all words or all metaphors are, it's a pretty poor way of trying to describe the omnipresence of light, of peace. But you understand. Now, let's lift up into the pure omnipresence, infinity and eternity of light. and Realize that consciousness is that infinity. Consciousness is that omnipresence of light, of peace, of truth, of bliss. And even though through the five senses we experience an infinite variety of different forms, bodies, substances, materials, places, conditions, good and bad, free and limited, full and lacking, and so on. Actually, what all is is pure light and peace, indivisible, inseparable, never local, never objectified, always the whole of peace, the whole of light. And this is what we wish to lift to in awareness, lift to in consciousness. I am the light, because none but light exists. I am the peace, because none but peace exists. God is light. God is peace. The infinitude is light, peace, bliss, omnipresence. Therefore, I am that. All is that. Now, assuming we've achieved in this very way the lifting of our conscious awareness into the awareness of light, the consciousness of light, peace, bliss, Omnipresence, infinity, assuming we're really feeling and therefore experiencing a consciousness of infinite light. We've worked and worked and we spent, I don't know, five minutes doing it, but we may need to spend five hours doing it. If the sense of discord is strong, if the sense or experience of pain and suffering is strong, we have to work and it's the one thing to work at. The one effort we have to make, lifting into the consciousness of truth, going to where God is, going to what God is, and that is the consciousness of truth, the consciousness that all is light, all is peace, so that the actual feeling, the actual experience, the actual reality of the truth is now ours. And so whether it be five minutes or one hour or five hours or even days, sometimes we have to keep working at it. And believe me, my friends, that is the one thing to work at, even if it is for days, until we feel the reality of it and experience the real feeling, the real 
palpability of truth as consciousness, assuming we've done that or arrived at that state of consciousness, we can now observe that sense of locality that has been discordant and, and here's the key, any sense of locality we must be able to do the same for. We mustn't favour one seeming local place or thing or him or her or condition. Really hear that. I hope you did. Really hear Jesus' words. We must not favour anything that seems to be. Because if we do, we're off track. We're out of truth and we'll never witness truth. But now, assuming we've lifted now into the truth of peace and light, omnipresent, eternal, infinite, we are now able to, in and as that consciousness observe certainly that place or organ or function or part of the body or any part or condition of the entirety of our experience, our consciousness, and every other part, and realize that it, despite the way it appears to be as something objectified, local, finite, personal, isn't and is in fact in reality, the whole of omnipresent light and peace existing fully manifest, fully demonstrated, fully visible, fully tangible. And when we can do that, we rest. We're not fooled any longer by the appearance. We will not now judge any longer by that appearance. We are judging now by truth, and that is that omnipresent light and peace is actually in reality right there as that which we are observing. And we now rest and let the light of truth shine through our open consciousness and reveal the fullness of itself as the fulfillment of being, of consciousness. Our attention isn't out there looking for some change in the appearance, but our attention is in here, which means a withinness of consciousness, the truth of consciousness, just like that high-powered microscope. Our attention is in the withinness, the essence, the truth of everything, everywhere, and we're waiting for an illumined experience of the light being the only presence here and the only presence everywhere. The light is now able in our awareness of truth and our rest, our silence, our attentiveness to truth to glow brighter, to fill our sense, to illumine our sense, lift our sense in light, in peace, flood us, permeate us, overflow us with the reality of light and peace and joy and bliss and wholeness being the only reality everywhere present. The incorporeal, remember, we're not looking for anything corporeal. We're not looking for the false sense to change magically. We're looking for the real sense now and waiting patiently for it with our gently open and receptive consciousness. And infallibly it comes because it's already here. It's simply our senses that finally are able to detect that which is already here, light and peace, now more fully, more tangibly, more palpably. And infallibly this occurs as we remain sitting silently in truth and the whole of being is filled with light, experienced, tangibly experienced. The whole of being is filled with peace, with truth, with freedom. And we evidence 
our wholeness. Here it is as the peace, as the light, filling the whole of being. And all is well. All is done. And so you see now that our statement, nothing local can be healed, is quite correct. And as consciousness lifts and is tangibly living the truth of omnipresence, nothing local ever, nothing personal, nothing finite, and is able to look throughout its consciousness and realize that nothing is local, nothing is finite, despite the sense of it being, then it is that consciousness is sufficiently lifted and living the light of truth, the peace of truth, and is able now to simply rest in that omnipresence of truth, of light, of peace. And it is that experience of being filled with the light of truth in actual awareness that evidences what seems to be local pain or suffering or illness, disease or injury or accident as now healed and whole and perfect. Thank you.